Conrad, have I got a deal for you. Is it going to make me rich? Um, I don't know, but maybe. Is it going to be easy? It's going to be so easy. It's going to be so fast. Do you have a secret for me, Guy? I've got a secret for you. Okay, I want to hear it. Eight-minute abs. So I've heard about eight-minute abs. I want seven-minute abs, but only that like professional athletes know about. You can't do abs in seven minutes. <laughs> but you know what you can do? A $7 million law firm. A $7 million law firm <laughs> in three simple steps, Guy? Are other lawyers doing this right now and I'm missing out? Seven minutes a day. Okay, I want to hear all about it. Do I have to sign up for a newsletter to hear about this? Uh, you need to click on some internet ads. Okay, I'm all in. Conrad, what are we going to talk about today? For the news today, we're going to be talking about zooming from the operating room into the courtroom. We've got some Google updates and some more awesome reporting coming from our friends at Clio. We're going to cover by the numbers and what you may have got from our casual banter at the beginning. We're going to be talking about FOMO marketing on Facebook. And finally, we're going to be covering what's happening right now, which is Tech Show. We've got five tips from five of the marketing presenters. We're going to talk about those right now. Roll the music. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice, here on Legal Talk Network. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors. Clio's cloud-based practice management software makes it easy to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. LawYaw provides end-to-end -end document automation for solo, small, and mid-sized practices. Save time and avoid mistakes with documents that you draft over and over again. Learn more at LawYaw.com. That's L-A-W-Y-A-W dot com. Thanks to Alert Communications for sponsoring this episode. If any law firm is looking for call, intake, or retainer services available 24-7, 365, just call 866 Eight two seven five five six eight, And also, LexisNexis Interaction, the leading client relationship management solution purpose-built for the way law firms engage with their clients. Learn more at interaction.com. All right, Guy, let's talk about the news. So there's a lot of great news coming out right now, and we're going to start with a report from our friends at Clio. The Clio Lego Trends for solo law firms just came out. This was covered by our favorite writer. Actually, my original favorite legal writer, Bob Ambrosi, is focused on the solo law firm market and is really talking about harnessing modern technology to bring in. And the data point out of this was that law firms that are really harnessing technology at this small level, are bringing in 50 grand more on average. Yeah, I can't encourage people enough to go check out all the legal trends reports, really, but this most recent one that's pulling out some data for solos, I think is extremely valuable. Where can we find Ambrosi's article? On Law Sites, his blog. Okay, so go there, read it, let Bob know that we sent you there. And uh, yeah, spend some time checking out the Clio Trends Report, especially if you're solo, because there's I think one of the things that you guys miss so frequently is understanding how other people are actually doing. And Clio's done a better job than anyone at bringing that data together so you can start benchmarking yourselves against other people. Super important. The biggest thing that's come out in the last, I want to say, 10 days was Clubhouse. Everyone is trying to get into the club. Can you give a quick overview of why do we care and any concerns that we have with Clubhouse? Well, Clubhouse is hot right now. You know, my thing is just another way for us to communicate. For those that don't know, it's an app. Apparently, it only works on iPhones right now. I think they're coming out with an Android version. I don't know if that's already out. Maybe that's... They move fast, so who knows what's going on over there. But it's audio only. It's like an audio only 
social network where you can create these rooms, have conversations. A couple issues, though, you might want to look this up in your news feeds. Apparently, someone's accusing, I don't know if it's the Chinese government or some company or something, of listening and recording to these uh, clubhouse things. I saw that. Maybe it's a rumor, so don't quote me on that. But <laughs> I did Come see, here for authoritative news I re- uh, and occasionally uh, rumors. <laughs> Well, one issue that I did see, and this was covered by most of the ma- some of the major uh, publications, is that once you're on Clubhouse, you can never leave because apparently it gives you permission to everybody's contacts. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some privacy litigation that comes out of this, but to deactivate your account and have them delete it, you have to email them. Hmm. And then who knows when they respond, and then there's been all sorts of issues, and I'm sure it's all in the terms, but that's just something to keep your eye on if you're a Clubhouse person. If you're clubhousing. Clubhousing. If you're in the club, in the club (laughs) house. All right. While we're talking about everything virtual, for those of you who did not get this run across your screen, you know, last time we had the the lawyer who showed up uh, in, in court as a cat brought to you this month. We had the doctor who showed up to court while he was doing surgery. So if you want to go kill some brain cells and some of your time, go look up doctor doing surgery uh, during his traffic ticket trial. Uh, Now, my question is, was the lawyer his patient? (laughs) So maybe his lawyer, he was there with his lawyer. His lawyer just happened to be the patient. This feels like we should have a much better like ending side to this, this joke. But um, yeah, Zoom is everywhere. Zoom fatigue. (laughs) It's it's a video worth watching if you want to feel a little better about how much zooming you're doing. Think about the confidence level of doing surgery while you're on a Zoom traffic ticket hearing. I think it just has to go to the extent of like, like I can't think of something more like I hate traffic ticket lawyers and this entire system than I'm going to continue doing my job, which happens to be taking someone's appendix out. While we do this, this is so mind-numbingly nauseating for me. I think it's hysterical. I mean, I could barely respond to emails while I'm doing this podcast, and so I can't imagine how hard it would be for someone to do surgery and then deal with a judge. But All right. I'm not a surgeon, so we'll never know. Let's move to something a little slightly more serious. Two things that you should be aware of. Google's Core Web Vitals update comes out in May if you care about SEO you should be all over this. And the other thing that came out very recently is iOS 14, which it's tightening up privacy, which is going to make our job of doing things like retargeting advertising a little bit more difficult. And that is legal marketing news from Guy and Conrad. Let's take a break. The right client relationship management solution enables and empowers firm growth. LexisNexis Interaction is designed specifically for law firms and embeds client intelligence at the heart of every interaction, providing valuable insights into client relationships so you can make strategic decisions about how to focus your resources to gain more business. Learn more and request your free demo at interaction.com slash lunch hour. No one cites routine drafting as the reason they chose to become a lawyer, but that's where a lot of time goes for solo practitioners and small firms. Lawya can help you transform your existing Word documents into reusable templates with no coding required. Save time and avoid errors with intuitive features like conditional logic. Use a tool that empowers your experience and expertise. Learn more at lawya.com. That's L-A-W-Y-A-W.com. And we're back. And as we love to do, because we are so grateful for those that listen to this podcast, we'd like to thank you for leaving reviews and call out Michael Primus via Apple Podcasts, who says about Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, fresh, usable content. They offer realistic ideas for lawyers to start from. Thank you so much, Michael. We really appreciate that. You must be listening to Conrad. <laughs> and you must not be on Facebook. I'm probably smart. Mm-hmm. Let's hit some numbers. So the reason I said Michael must not be on Facebook is we're going to talk about the number 2 million. $2 million, Guy, in three easy steps. That's the number that we want to talk about that we're seeing all over Facebook. Tell me more about this, Guy. I mean, I don't know what to say. 
there's a lot of uh, advertising about zero to two million in six months. Three simple steps. See a couple simple steps or a simple system or a secret system or some kind of multi-dimensional advertising or... Are you calling someone out specifically with multi-dimensional advertising? Funnel hacking. So <laughs> this is a very old psychological principle that works. And Guy's right. We started this podcast talking about weight loss. This is the same exact thing that people get hooked on in January when they make their New Year's resolutions for weight loss. Drink this shake, eat this diet, these six minutes to get abs of steel. We're seeing this hit the legal marketing world really aggressively right now. This is FOMO marketing, fear of missing out. And the system is very, very basic. It basically says, other people are doing this. It's very easy. We have a secret. And in the legal world, the secret is to usually a seven-figure practice. Guy, you've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this for a long time. How many of your clients, of which I imagine there have been hundreds, how many of them found riches in three simple steps? <laughs> None that I can think of, but in fairness, I never really asked them, have you only done three things to become a successful law <laughs> That is fair. <laughs> and, the, and the reason is you didn't ask them because it's stupid. There are hundreds of things you need to get right. And we're seeing these advertisements and these promises and they're targeting specifically small solo. And I hate to be, I hate to offend our audience, but naive lawyers into thinking that there is an easy way to be successful. This is not easy. This is not an easy game. It never has been. It never will be. It's getting harder, not easier. And so this this stuff really ticks me off. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. And, and I, I want you guys to learn how to spot this when it hits your Facebook feed. Or if you hear it at a conference, right? there's a lot of BS that is being propagated by people in the legal marketing world. And it seems to just have proliferated in the last three months. Yeah, and sadly, I think a lot of this has to do with it's a, a sign of the times. People that might be in bad shape for whatever reasons, a lot of factors going into that are desperate for some quick fix. And I guess this is our reminder that there really aren't any quick fixes. And it's, you know, it's sad that this happens, but it's it's really been, it has seemed like it's been, I think we've even talked about this on a previous episode that there's been an uptick in these ads and it's not just the ads. I mean, you and I sat in on a conference, virtual conference the other day. Guy, if I remember correctly, there were 4,000 people signed up for this conference. So like it was marketed very heavily. And some of, this, I, some of the speakers are spewing nonsense. I heard Bill Hauser stand there and say, marketing is not profitable, right? Marketing is not profitable. Uh, so that made me sit up and I'm like, well, uh-oh, because I've kind of built my career on marketing. I should probably listen. And the answer to marketing is not profitable was until you sell something, right? Well, that's like saying having a store is not profitable until you sell something. Having a pizza restaurant is not profitable until you sell a pizza. Like, of course, it's th this stuff sounds like... It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. But it honestly sounds like Tom Robbins took a bong hit and gave you some like bad advice. It's just, it's, it's insane. So like just move away from the idea that this is so easy and just be aware that a lot of what you're hearing is garbage. And there's a lot of garbage that's being fed to people because it makes it ma in the same way that I think I can get abs of steel in six minutes. It makes me feel good and optimistic. Right. It's a problem. It's a big problem. Do you believe, Guy, that the key to local search, one of the, the easy step for local search is to send your staff out to take selfies at local landmarks, and that's what's going to guarantee you those top three results? <laughs> um, no, but trying to put a positive spin on it, like maybe you get some brand awareness from people seeing your Come on. landmark. Come on. Come <laughs> on. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to be the shepherd. You're trying to be you're trying you're being kind. Yes, that will not help you rank in the local pack. I do I do not believe. Okay. Personally. And have you seen this advice on the web, Guy? 
I have seen it. From people who spend lots of money advertising to lawyers? Yep, I've seen it. Where this really annoys me, and this is why I can't let this go. So we, speaking of Clubhouse, we, we were sitting at that conference and a young aspiring starting out PI lawyer asked one of the hosts what they should do. And the answer was to just get on Clubhouse and get lots of followers. And that's going to drive car accident cases. Can you explain to me, Guy, how that would work? Well, you know, if people are on Clubhouse driving around and you <laughs> say something into the app and distract them, then they get in an accident, then you're just conveniently you're there. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like think I of said, that angle. I'm Silly trying, me. <laughs> trying to be the shepherd. Okay. But the worst part of this is you're going to get lawyers who listen to this crap and try to build their careers on this. On trying to get people in the car accidents on Clubhouse. (laughs) This seems like a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, look, the the point's there. I, you know, my whole thing about all this is like you said at the outset, it's a combination of hundreds of things. Like, could Clubhouse be great for building some new relationships, maybe getting some referral relationships, or, you know, if you're in a group that's at a, a room, I guess they call them, that has a topic that's related to your practice and you can share some knowledge and experience and meet some new people and get people to subscribe to email lists and nurture those relationships, then yeah, it's great. But this idea that you're going to go download an app and go jump into a room and all these people are going to be on there just waiting for you to come in. Thank goodness you arrived in our room so we can hire you. That's the part that's like, come on. And, and again, I, my, the other part of this for me is because I'm, I'm certainly sympathetic to lawyers that might be in, you know, one, they don't have time to learn all this stuff. That's why they turn to the experts like us included. Two, some of them are getting desperate. They're, you know, some of them have shiny object syndrome. But, you know, it's the same thing we talk about when we talk about like reading your vendor agreements and all this other stuff is like, you're a lawyer. Like, you know better than this. You know that this overnight success thing is not great. Not all it's cracked up to be. You can't do abs in seven minutes. You can't. It's from something about Mary, by the way. You ever see that movie? Oh, Mm. yeah. You don't watch movies. I'm not a movie guy. Too athletic. Anyway, (laughs) is that a good place for us to take a break? We should take a break. I I, I feel like we've beat this Go decompress. Either, yeah, I'm going to go have a glass of water and we'll decompress. I was going to say scotch. I'm going to go have a glass, except it's 11.43 where I am right now. Well, you got 15 minutes. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go chill out while you guys listen to a soothing ad from one of our sponsors. Did you know that firms using electronic payments collect an average of $15,179 more per lawyer and see 6% more revenue growth? Simply put, law firms using electronic payments on average bring in higher case volumes and more revenue. For more insights to help turbocharge your law firm, check out Clio's Legal Trends Report, a compilation of industry insights. Go to clio.com today to download your free copy. As the largest legal-only call center in the U.S., Alert Communications helps law firms and legal marketing agencies with new client intake. Alert captures and responds to all leads 24-7, 365 as an extension of your firm in both English and Spanish. Alert uses proven intake methods, customizing responses as needed, which earns the trust of clients and improves client retention. To find out how Alert can help your law office, call 866-827-5568 or visit alertcommunications.com forward slash LTN. Welcome back to Lunch Hour Scotch and Cynicism. I mean, Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. (laughs) Maybe we should change this to like the Scotch and Secrets. (laughs) Seriously, though, transitioning into our next segment, which I'm really excited about, but I'm also very biased because I'm a chair member of the ABA Tech Show, which is coming up next week or this week, depending on It's coming up this week if you're listening to us right now. This week. And we're very excited. I'm the marketing track chair, and I'm very proud of this group that has agreed to uh, participate and very grateful for their volunteering. And so we want to do a little teaser because th- we we're hoping that this airs around the same time the tech show is going on. And so some of our marketing track speakers have been gracious enough to send us some quick blurbs of their sessions, some key takeaways. So we're going to play some of those. 
Talk Tech Show, hopefully persuade you to check it out. First up, to Cora Davis. Great day. This is attorney Takora Davis, founder and CEO of V Creators Law Firm. I'm really excited to lead the session for the ABA Tech Show on the Online Communities Workshop. And I wanted to share with you guys some really juicy takeaways from my session. So I'm speaking about building online communities and why you should do it like yesterday. One of the benefits of building an online community is that rather than waiting for your prospective clients to come to you, you can actually immerse yourself into their lives and their businesses by being a go-to resource um, for what they need. I love being an early adopter of new technology because early adopters are able to really grow platforms very quickly and leverage those new things. I love Clubhouse. It's a great new platform. And being an early adopter of that has allowed me to gain recognition, connect with people I never would have connected with before, and get new clients, new speaking engagements, and new opportunities. It's a great way to turn your brand's reputation, and that will help ripen your brand's reputation to bear fruit of serving as a trusted resource. It's going to yield endless referrals of new clients, rich relationships to strengthen your brand, opportunities and partnership with your chosen platform, and a supportive community that will stay and pay you. You have to know where your people are, but not only where they are, but where are your people going? Getting very clear about your client avatar, your ideal customer, the ideal client type, who they are. Make sure you know them like the back of your hand. Don't make assumptions or categorize people. You need to know who these people are. Consider even doing case studies or client interviews to get that information from them to help develop your client avatar. I hope these takeaways from me have really piqued your interest in my particular session with the ABA Tech Show. I'm looking forward to seeing you at my particular session for online communities, and I look forward to helping you and sharing my smarts with you. So thank you, Takora. Really looking forward to this session. So for me, a couple of things that I hear in there, and I I can see this stuff going on. I mean, um, whatever, forget about the platform for a second. There are people asking for lawyer referrals online, on social networks. I see it my, with my own two eyes. If you don't believe me, you can email me or tweet at me and I will show you screenshots. But it's work, right? You got to go in there. You've got to invest in the community. You've got to invest in the relationships. So that's one where I do see that there's been a, in my opinion, there's been this shift, especially during the times of COVID, that people are online and they're, and because we can't meet in person, it's filling some of that vacuum face to face with these online communities. Conrad? Yeah, I mean, we were we were dumping on Clubhouse and then we started with our first example of being Clubhouse. But the key that she said, what I wrote down is know where your people are. I think one of the reasons that Clubhouse got so much hype among tech nerds is because a bunch of tech nerds got together and talked to tech nerds and you know, the tech nerds who are lawyers, like you're all talking and you're sharing information. It's great, but you need to know where your people are, right? And you're right. He is absolutely correct. Platform agnostic, but think about where your people are. And that's the key. She, she said two things, know where your people are. She also said, know who your people are. And that's the key for me with social. And, and the other thing, Guy, you're totally right. This is work. This is time. This is dedication. This is building relationships. And that is not a three simple steps. Awesome. Uh, Next up, we have Attorney Sync's own Megan Boyd. Hello, I'm Megan Boyd, and I presented at the ABA Tech Show on website teardowns, what not to do when it comes to your website. Some of the main takeaways from my presentation was you really want a website that is user-friendly. You don't want to use flashy text. You want to have prominent calls to action. You want it easy for the user to read your website and to contact you. So that means making it easy for them to call you, which means putting your phone number in the header prominently so that it's easy to see and easy to click on when you are browsing your website on a mobile device. Also, you want to use professional images on your site. If you're going to spend the time and money to invest in a website design, then you need to invest in professional photography. That means having a professional logo done and taking professional portraits of you and your team for the website. Also, you need to track your results. 
make sure that you have Google Analytics on your website and that you are tracking to see where traffic comes from, where traffic is leaving from, what people are doing when they land on your website, whether that's filling out a form or calling you, track those results. Google Analytics provides a free class on how to use it. I suggest you take it, you make sure that you have analytics installed and that you're looking at it at least once a month to determine what you may or may not need to do to increase the amount of phone calls you have and the amount of contact forms that are coming into your website. My name is Megan Boyd and you can follow me on Twitter, M-G-N-B-Y-D. That's my name with no vowels, M-G-N-B-Y-D. Thank you, Megan. And so the reason I'm excited for this one is because Megan presented some very good, useful tips, but it's going to be a teardown, right? So she's going to, we know that she there are a lot of nice, but she's taking something <laughs> apart. Yeah, we know that a lot of the examples that she's going to show are law firm websites that don't do any of the things that she just talked about. So you're going to get a lot of uh, stock imagery and lack of user experience. And and I think that she's going to probably, my, my hunch is that it'll tie into the Core Web Vitals thing coming up too, which again, you know, you said at the outset, even beyond SEO, regardless of whether how much weight Google gives it in terms of ranking factor, guess what? It's a user factor. It right. kills conversions. I mean, how many times do you open up analytics and see up page load speed and you're wondering why conversion rate's low? So another great session at Tech Show. I mean, my favorite thing she mentioned, which seems to be pathetically overlooked, is the importance of professional photography. I feel like you can give your website a 2x wow factor with professional photography, right? And there are plenty of starving wedding photographers right now, very happy to come in and do some amazing work for you. And so we really encourage our clients whenever we're doing a website redesign to bring someone in and take a shot because it, it does make a huge difference. And our next tech show marketing track expert that we are very grateful to be uh, welcoming back to Tech Show by popular demand is Joy Hawkins. Joy Hawkins. Hi, my name is Joy Hawkins. I'm the owner and founder of Sterling Sky, which is a marketing agency that does local SEO for all kinds of different small businesses, including lawyers. My session at the ABA Tech Show this year is going to be specifically about Google, how you can get more leads from Google, um, how you can rank better, and just some general trends that we are seeing amongst various lawyers that we work with. So in particular, I'm first going to be talking about local services ads, which are a new type of ad that launched with Google last year and made quite an impact in what we're seeing with what performs and, and what works well for lawyers. So we're going to kind of be looking at you know, how they impacted regular Google ads so the ads that you're normally running on Google that you're paying per click for, how they impacted Google My Business listings, which are the free listings that you have like in the organic section, and just some general kind of observations that we're seeing. The next thing I'll be looking at is just kind of dispelling some myths when it comes to ranking on Google, what strategies work and what does not work. Um, so kind of covering a few of those. Then I'll also be diving into some trends and patterns that we're noticing when it comes to reviews. So some interesting stuff that we're seeing, things that you should be aware of as a business owner when it comes to uh, tracking your reviews online. And then finally, uh, at the end, I'm going to be kind of wrapping up with some tips and strategies for you to use to better track your online marketing efforts. So if you're spending some time and effort trying to get your law firm ranked better on Google, um, how you can kind of track the results of that. So I hope to see you guys at my session and uh, look forward to any questions. So obviously, Joy, the queen of local, so grateful to have her. Conrad, what stands out from you? I mean, she's uh, she's hammering the local, she's hammering Google. Yeah, so I think the most interesting piece of data, and again, we're recording this before we actually see the data, I believe what Joy is going to share and the results of this are surprising from what we've seen in the past with local service ads, is how and where local service ads, the presence of local service ads, impacts click-through rates on other segments of the SERP pages. So where does local steal from? Is it PPC? Is it the map pack? Or is it organic at the bottom? And I won't give it away here, but the previous studies that have been done on this, the results are very counterintuitive. Awesome. Thanks again to Joy. And be sure to get your tickets 
to hear that full session live-ish. We're going to go into a speed round for these next two. So up next is Cleo's George Saharis. Hi there. My name is George Saharis, and I'll be presenting next week at ABA Tech Show uh, on the topic of creating client-centered marketing. In my presentation, it'll be my pleasure to walk everybody in the crowd through a few different key concepts, uh, including understanding law for marketing KPIs, optimizing conversion rates through your funnel, as it's called in marketing, through creating better client experiences, and iterating through client feedback loops. In particular, I'll be diving into a few key insights over several years of research that I've conducted uh, as part of Clio's annual legal trends report, and I'll be identifying what I think the key points of your client journey are in which you can optimize uh, and use marketing to create better conversion and overall client experiences. So if that sounds interesting, I hope to uh, see you at the session and I'm very much looking forward to next week. Next up, we have Stephanie Everett from Lawyerist. Hey everybody, it's Stephanie from Lawyerist and I'm so excited to be joining the ABA Tech Show this year to talk about creating a marketing blueprint. So how many lawyers out there are guilty of what we call random acts of marketing? Yeah, you can raise your hands. It's okay. We know what you do. You see everything everybody else is doing and you think, I need to be on that tool. I need to be on Twitter. Or how many people have joined Clubhouse thinking, oh, that's the next big thing and I need to be there. Yeah, that's what we do. We get ourselves kind of caught up in seeing what everybody else is doing and we forget and we waste some of our most valuable resources, right? Our time and our money. And so we can avoid that trap if we have a strategic marketing plan one that's tailored to our practice and the type of clients that we actually want to attract into our firm. And so it starts with the basics, right? A solid foundation, including mission, vision, values. No, these words aren't just consultant speak. I'm going to show you in this session how these fundamental pieces of your practice and the foundation of what you're going to build are really the starting places for our marketing strategy. Then we're going to quickly cover client personas, what are they, and why they then build the next steps, right? And of course, because it's COVID, we're going to talk about some COVID-specific issues and how you might need to adjust your marketing messages during these uncertain times. So I hope you'll join me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks again to everybody for contributing to this. Really looking forward to Tech Show. Really grateful for all of your participation and contributions. Conrad, you're on the uh, tech show marketing track, no? What are you talking about? In what may not surprise you, Guy, I'm talking about how marketing agencies lie to their clients. And what? it's true. Maybe not all agencies, but what I'm really talking about is, is how does a law firm take control of their reporting so you don't trust you don't have to trust and rely on your agency to tell you how well they're doing. Because, Guy, as, as I've gone through this world since 2006, I have yet to find an agency that doesn't go out of its way to inflate how well they look to their clients. And so what I want to do is I want to flip the narrative. And I want attorneys specifically to have ownership and control of this very important data point that none of you have ever thought about. This is what we call the intake qualified lead. An intake qualified, so typically an agency will say, hey, we sent you 25 phone calls and seven form fills and three chats. And you'll go back to the agency and you'll say, yes, and they're all garbage. And the agency will, let, will come back to you and say, they're all garbage, and then you guys can fight about that. That has been the pattern that's happened for years you should do instead is actually have a process to do an intake qualified lead, which means when Bill, who answers your front desk, answers the phone, a couple things happen. A, we know where that phone call originated from. Was it Google Ads? Was it Google Local? Was it Avo? Was it whatever it may have been? B, in the process of doing that intake, we can determine whether or not that person was intake qualified. And having a system in place where you control that information instead of listening to me tell you how amazing I am is the key that aggressive, and, and this is where I go back to it's not easy. It's hard to do this, but it is a key for aggressive law firms to actually grow their firm correctly using really kind of MBA level insight as opposed to listening to your agency tell you that like, 
hey, we counted the same same phone call from the same person 12 times, and that's 12 new leads. Merry Christmas, right? That's the dynamic that has to change. Right. And, you know, I know you uh, you take the angle on holding agencies accountable, which I think is valuable. But even if you don't even have an agency, a lot of these same points uh, actually are extremely valid for, you know, if you're running your own marketing or if you're in charge of the marketing at a law firm. I would say especially if you're running your own marketing, because right. the likelihood that you have the experience to know what's actually working and what's not working is close to zero. No offense. I, I keep insulting the audience. Sorry. Sorry, audience. But get to a point where you have, where this is a math conversation and not an I think conversation. Awesome. Looking forward to that one. Guy, I think you have a nugget of awesomeness to share as well. I'm going to do some quick nuggets. I'm doing client relationship management workshop. I'm so big on CRM right now. I just, you know, this is one thing that we've been talking about forever, but the, this idea that you have all of these, if you've been practicing for a while, you've got all these professional contacts and that you don't do them anything with them. They just sit somewhere and there's no nurturing. There's no staying in touch. There's no you know, wishing them happy birthday. And so we're going to talk about you know, I'm going to try to be as platform agnostic as I can. Some CRMs are a little bit better than others. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about building CRM maps and, and automations and even beyond just email, right? Because now you can work in uh, texts into your automation map and that kind of stuff. But I, just the value of nurturing the relation. You know, you talk about, it, it's funny because it's like, it's one of those things that's like really old, but you know, it's because CRM has been around for forever. But it hasn't really been adopted, uh, and there seems to be an uptick in people paying attention to this. Because, and again, frankly, it's because it works so well. Uh, so that's one session. We'll be on uh, CRM, and then I'm also talking on. I got the shiny uh, object track one session. Uh, so I'll be talking about marketing <laughs> technology tool trends. So if you want a sneak peek of the future as I see it, and the stuff that's hot even beyond practical. Come to my <laughs> marketing technology tool trends session. I know you'll right. be there for that one, Conrad. I will be there. <laughs> I'm the I am the shiny object. What do you think about CRM, Conrad? So I mean, you, you again, as typical, you are much nicer than I am. <laughs> there are some really horrible CRMs out there. Mm. There are some really great CRMs out there. My bias is that law firms really are are handcuffed in evaluating which CRM to work with. I don't think you fully understand the potential. And again, here I go insulting the audience again. There's so much more potential than you than most of you are aware of. And there's so many more problems than most of you are aware of. The demos all look awesome. And some of them don't work well together. Some of them are insular. Some of them have limited functionality. Some of them are an absolute pain in the neck to work with. We have gone through three CRMs ourselves. We finally landed for us on HubSpot, which we're working with our clients on. There are some great legal specific CRMs out there. There are some terrible ones. This selecting what you work with is really important because as you know, Guy, getting in and out of these things is painful. It's oh, yeah. really hard. And the other thing is this is a tool and it changes the way your firm operates. And so don't look at CRM as like, oh, I'm going to buy whatever it may be, right? And all of a sudden, we're going to start sending birthday cards to our clients and, and the phone's going to start ringing more. Like these are tools that need to be used and they have an impact on the way you actually operate the firm. And so probably more of your effort in CRM needs to be on the people who use the product as opposed to the product itself. Come to Tech Show to learn more. Well... That brings us to the conclusion of another optimistic, high-energy episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. I think we need some like really happy music to end this with because this was, this was dark and grumpy. Maybe I'm just in a bad mood, but I don't know. As always, thank you, dear listeners, for listening and subscribers for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Thank you so much. And as always, if you have topic ideas, feedback, questions, or are willing to leave us a review, we really do appreciate and oftentimes enjoy your feedback. Thank you so much. And until next time, Conrad and Gee saying so long for Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Money makes a money makes a it makes a world go round.
Thank you for listening to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. If you'd like more information about what you heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS. Follow Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And or download the free app from Legal Talk Network in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, or subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.